It is now my pleasure to um, introduce Dr. Nolta, who is working on stem cell research in this area. Dr. Nolta's presence here at UC Davis really is a direct result of Proposition 71 and the creation of CIRM. When the voters passed Prop 71, um, she was actually um, in St. Louis. And she said, I want to come where the future of stem cell research is. And we were able to um, woo her back to her home state here in California. And as she has met our Huntington's families, she has become passionately committed to stem cell research on behalf of finding a cure for Huntington's. She has worked for more than 20 years with human stem cells and um, is currently um, involved with a number of clinical trials, having worked on over 18 cell and gene therapy trials during her career. She's widely published with over 100 papers and 15 book chapters. And uh, I think it's important to emphasize that her current research team studies the full range of stem and progenitor cell types, from adult to embryonic to cord, and is really focused on translational studies to develop new therapies. Dr. Nolta oversees UC Davis's regenerative medicine program, which today is comprised of more than 140 faculty members. I'm very in, uh, pleased to introduce Dr. Jan Nolta. Well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here to have a chance to tell you what we've been doing and to thank you for our um, grant that we got from the CIRM to study Huntington's disease. So as Dr. Wheelock had mentioned, um, currently no preventative or curative treatments exist for Huntington's disease. And this does result from a DNA mutation. There are CAG repeats that generate a toxic protein Huntington that damages neurons, put very simply. Unfortunately, it is currently a fatal disease. We very much want to change that. That has become the goal of my basic research. In addition to new drugs being developed to alleviate different symptoms, cell therapy and gene therapy provide the best options for permanent cures. I could show you a lot of charts, a lot of sequences of genes to try to understand it, but I would ask you please to go to our friend Chris Furby's website if you want to understand Huntington's disease a little bit. Um, Chris has some wonderful um, documentary clips that help us understand. Um, these clips uh, show his uh, beautiful uh, young mother, shown in the upper left, and her battle with Huntington's disease, and are really uh, presented in a, in a very heartfelt way, and really help us all understand about this disease. This is the medium spiny neuron. It's um, a very beautiful type of neuron to us. It's a striatal neuron. They're damaged or lost in HD, and they control movement, cognition, and emotion. And these are exactly the things that are affected in Huntington's disease. So damaged neurons round up. They retract their axons. And this really prevents effective signaling from cell to cell in the neural network, um, put in a very uh, simplistic way. It's well known that mesenchymal stem cells can actually restore these synaptic connections between neurons by secreting neurotrophic factors. So the mesenchymal stem cells, once injected into the brain, they're not becoming neurons. They're helping heal the neurons and helping extend the axons so that the synapses can function once again and so that the neural network can become more intact. And there have been a, one, a, a plethora of wonderful papers on this subject and uh, review articles that have been published. So these mesenchymal stem cells, which we expand from a, a normal donor's bone marrow, can exert neuroprotective and neurorestorative effects in the brain. However, this toxic mutant HTT protein will still be present in Huntington's disease, and that is the foe that we need to battle. To truly cure the disease, the levels of this protein must be reduced. Small interfering RNA strategies in mouse models of Huntington's disease have been shown um, by outstanding publications to specifically decrease mutant protein expression and aggregation while sparing the normal protein. So we can selectively do this using siRNA in transgenic mouse models. This decreases the HD symptoms and prolongs survival. And of course, the um, siRNA functions by uh, clipping the target M mRNA, and then the uh, cellular message is destroyed, as pictured here, and the protein, the mutant protein, will never be made. So this is our goal. 
But how do we deliver the siRNA into the neurons of HD patients? It's very easy to create a transgenic mouse where we can turn this siRNA on when we want to by giving the mouse a certain drug in its water and this will come on because we've put that gene into its entire genome throughout its body. But how can we get these effective, very effective therapies to patients? A large number of people have been working on this over the years and it's still a, a little bit of a mystery. And this is because these charged nucleic acids do not readily cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, they can be directly injected into the brain if there's a port in the brain. That means uh, leaving your uh, skull open, by the way. Um, with cholesterol modification, they could get uh, through into some of the neurons. Um, this is really a fleeting strategy. There are very low levels of uptake, and the sRNA would need to be continually infused. And as I mentioned, there are many companies working on improving this. But our strategy is to use human mesenchymal stem cells, which can integrate benignly into the brain tissue, and they do shelter themselves from the immune system for sustained release and delivery of anti-mutant Huntington SIR, uh, siRNA to battle this uh, mutant protein. And we do have a patent pending at UC Davis for this technology. This is also what our translational grant um, has been funded for from CIRM. This is showing, uh, it's not showing up very well in here, but uh, it's showing a um, paramedic human mesenchymal stem cell here in red, um, pouring the anti-Huntington protein uh, siRNA, shown in red, into this green uh, target cell. Uh, Scott Oltz, an, an outstanding postdoctoral fellow in my lab, does this and does wonderful video microscopy showing this happening. The cells actually, um, the mesenchymal stem cells interact with other cells and with neurons through a uh, a variety of methods, including tunneling nanotubules, where they directly infuse this uh, medicine into the other cells. This is showing a target cell in green that has had the siRNA infused into it. You can see that it's all throughout the cell, and when we uh, go through the cell in, uh, in sections, we can see that it's also in the nucleus. That's very important. And this is a video of this, the uh, mesenchymal stem cells moving around, interacting with other cells. You can see that they are very uh, social. So they come together, <laughs> I'm trying to catch them there, they come together and there are a lot of uh, projections going between the cells, whereas the, where the mesenchymal stem cells are actually querying the other cell and asking if it needs anything, they can actually infuse something as large as a mitochondrion into the other cell if the, if the other cell is damaged and needs new batteries, actually. And uh, this is some of Scott's uh, video microscopy. And um, he is one of your uh, CERM funded trainees who's on this grant and has done uh, these wonderful videos. And we're now looking at um, the interactions with the damaged um, neurons from um, Huntington's patients. So we know that in the brain, um, through work by uh, Dan Offen's group and others, we know that if we um, put the mesenchymal stem cells into one site in the brain, they will actually seek out a lesion so the lesion is shown here in white, and the mesenchymal stem cells are these um, black dots. They've been labeled with a uh, iron particle, and uh, we do a lot of this imaging in our lab. They will migrate through the brain and actually find the areas of damaged neurons and um, damaged cells, and will go uh, toward those selectively. And so we're um, capitalizing upon their innate um, seek and rescue mission after injection into the brain. So our ongoing studies in my own lab show that human MSC injected directly into the brains of immune deficient mice that cannot reject these human cells survive for months. They migrate readily throughout the neural tissue and they're still present in robust numbers and the brain tissue architecture is unaltered. This is a picture um, showing uh, mesenchymal stem cells implanted intracranially into the brain of an immune deficient mouse. We can see the human cells um, with the pink uh, antibody stain here. This one's at five weeks, and we also have longer term data. And now we're testing this anti-mutant HTT siRNA transfer efficiency from these human MSC into the damaged neurons in the brains of mice that overexpress this mutant HTT protein, the mutant human HTT protein. And this is a new strain of mice um, developed at UC Davis with our outstanding mouse biology program. And this is a part of um, one of the uh, tools that will be used in this siRNA transfer project that is funded by um, California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And we thank you all for funding that project because I don't have any other Huntington's disease funding in my lab aside from that that's been generously given to us by um, advocates and donors. So this um, funding really helps us work 
toward um, curing this very aggressive and deadly disease. We've also just completed intracranial injection of human mesenchymal stem cells into a clinically relevant large animal model. This is something that the um, FDA wanted. It was safe. There was normal brain architecture. No tumors or other tissue abnormalities were detected whatsoever throughout the brain. And after five months, human mesenchymal stem cells were still present at levels equivalent to those that we've seen in the immune deficient mouse brains. And above all, safety was demonstrated. That's what the Food and Drug Administration wants. Um, first and foremost from us is to show safety. And we're now working on the efficacy as well in that model. So these are the cellular therapy trials for HD. We're currently in IND enabling good laboratory practice studies at UC Davis, the first trial will be MSC on their own, uh, non-gene modified, just to test their neurorestorative effects, to see if they can secrete neurotrophic factors, which we know that they do, and to cause some of the neural stem cells in the brain to regenerate these medium spiny neurons. The second is the um, project that you have funded, uh, MSC to produce factors to reduce the toxic uh, HTT protein, the siRNA, and we're also working with labs um, throughout Europe, really, to uh, secrete brain-derived neurotrophic factor from these MSC to heal neurons, and that's known to very effectively uh, prompt the neural stem cells to um, divide within the brain. We're also working on a future project, mesenchymal stem cells plus medium spiny neuron progenitors derived from human embryonic stem cell lines to replace those that have already been lost. This would be for later stage HD. And this, um, this one would be in the future when these approaches are safe, and we're working on uh, that as well. I would like to thank uh, my entire team. You just heard from Dr. Wheelock. Um, everyone who works on this team, really. Um, Gerhard Bauer, who directs our good manufacturing practice facility that is now open and uh, opening next week. We just had the grand opening yesterday. And we are accepting um, contracts from collaborators throughout California, especially CERN-funded collaborators. Our wonderful advisors who really helped me with um, understanding. Uh, Leslie and Paul really helped me to understand Huntington's disease. Um, I have worked on engineering mesenchymal stem cells to secrete proteins and factors for over 20 years in many different animal models, but I've only been working on Huntington's disease for the past three years since I came back to UC Davis. I was really moved to do so from our um, wonderful HD patient advocates, especially uh, Dr. Wheelock, who told me that her HD patients are some of the best people in the world. And uh, <laughs> once I met them, I would be firmly um, <clears throat> in, in this field, and I absolutely am. Um, our Barcelona team, we also have a Milan team that's working on this. Uh, the funding is from CIRM and from patient advocate groups, and especially the HD patient advocates patients and their families who have donated from their own pockets to help us um, move this research forward for the uh, large animal studies that um, the FDA needs, but uh, for which we didn't have funding. And I'm just extremely grateful to you, to CIRM, um, and to all of the patients who inspire us every day and every night. Thank you. <laughs>